Net Dollar Retention, NDR, aka Net Revenue Retention, NRR, rate measures the changes in recurring revenue caused due to fluctuations within the revenue from the existing customer base. The formula includes current MRR, expansion revenue, downgrades, and churn. If you're more comfortable with annual calculations, you can go ahead and switch the MRR inputs with ARR values. Although it is recommended to perform monthly calculations as well to dig deeper into the components that make up your net revenue retention. Let's take a couple of scenarios to illustrate the importance of this metric. Company A starts the month with $10,000 in recurring revenue. Over the month, it adds $3,000 in expansion revenue. $1,500 in downgrades, and $500 in churn. Company B starts the month with $10,000 in recurring revenue. Over the month, it does not see any expansion revenue but adds $5,000 in new subscriptions, $1,500 in downgrades, and $1,000 in churn. By looking at the MRRs alone, you would say that Company B fares better. However, going by the NDRs, not so much. This is where calculating NDR plays a pivotal role in recurring revenue valuation for SaaS companies. Renewal rate measures the percentage of customers who renew their contracts at the end of their subscriptions. There are two methods of calculating the renewal rates. The first one is the count or customer renewal rate. The number of renewed items against the number of renewable items gives the count or customer renewal rate. The formula is... Let's take an example to illustrate this metric. 100 customers have subscribed to your product at the beginning of this month. At the end of the month, 90 renew their subscription. The renewal rate for your product this month is 90%. Customer renewal rate can be maximum of 100% and is best used when your customer base is homogenous. Similar types of customers, contract terms and conditions, price range, and the like. The second method is calculating the dollar or revenue renewal rate. Unlike the count formula, the dollar or revenue renewal rate considers the contract's dollar value renewed. The formula is as follows. So let's hop on to the next metric now. In SaaS, churn is the rate at which customers cancel their subscriptions. It's usually measured as a percentage. To calculate your SaaS churn rate, you need to figure out what you're looking to track. You could either track the revenue you're losing or your customers. Here are a few churn numbers. Annual revenue churn, monthly revenue churn, subscriber churn. ARR churn and MRR churn would calculate the revenue lost whereas the subscriber or customer churn rate will calculate the rate at which you're losing your customers. For most businesses, ARR churn isn't a key indicator since the measurement intervals are too far apart, yearly. You can't make any active changes. Subscription churn. Subscription churn is the number of subscribers or customers that stop paying for your product or service in a given period of time. Churn can be seen from different angles, and businesses can have their own way of calculating it based on what is relevant for their organization. Subscriber churn is calculated as the ratio of the number of customers lost during a period, typically a month or a year, and the number of customers present at the beginning of that period. If the number of customers at the beginning of the year 2019 is 100, and through 2019, five of those customers canceled their subscriptions, subscriber churn is 5 over 100 or 5%. MRR churn. Monthly recurring revenue churn is calculated as the ratio of MRR lost during that month minus new upgrades or subscription revenue and divided by total MRR at the beginning of the month.
if a company had $300,000 MRR at the beginning of the month, $250,000 MRR at the end of that month, and $70,000 MRR in new subscription revenue from existing customers, the monthly churn rate would be negative 6.6%. A negative churn rate means that the new revenues adding during the period were greater than those that canceled. The annual churn rate, ARR churn, can also be calculated by the same formula by adjusting the periods. Net MRR churn rate is the net percentage of total MRR loss from existing subscriptions or customers during a period. It takes into account the MRR gain from expansions and upgrades from your remaining customers. It gives you a clear indication of how much increase or decrease in revenue can be expected from your existing customers. The difference between net MRR churn rate and gross MRR churn rate is that the latter doesn't take into account expansion revenue from the existing customer base. Here's how it's calculated. How should businesses interpret it? Net MRR churn rate is the true indicator of how your business is faring. It tells you whether your business is sustainable or not. A net negative churn rate is great, indicating growth contributed by the existing subscription base. If this number is positive, it means your business revenue contribution from existing customers is shrinking faster than it's expanding. Gross MRR churn rate is the percentage reduction in monthly recurring revenue from existing subscriptions because of factors such as subscriptions being moved from paid plans to lower or free plans, cancellations, add-ons, and other services removed from subscriptions. So how is gross MRR churn rate calculated? The overall contraction in the MRR can be due to downgrades or cancellations. If this is high, a business should try to understand the reason for the cancellations taking place. It could be voluntary churn wherein dissatisfied customers cancel their subscription due to lack of perceived value, or it could be involuntary churn wherein the customer's credit card expires and hence the subscription gets canceled. Revenue churn is a measure of the recurring revenue lost by a SaaS business through subscription cancellations and downgrades. Revenue churn is derived as the ratio of revenue lost through a cancellation during a given period versus the revenue available at the beginning of that period. It's usually expressed as a percentage. Negative churn is a specific state of the net churn of a subscription business when it's able to add more in expansion revenue than it's losing as churned MRR. Net churn is calculated as Imagine a business that closes a month with 10 customers paying $100 each. Let's imagine one customer churns the next month but the remaining nine customers upgrades to $120 each. The net churn is? Needless to say, negative churn is an aspirational state for any subscription business. It means that the business is able to more than compensate for its revenue churn from within the existing customer base. Many factors go into achieving negative churn not the least of which is minimizing revenue churn. On the other end, expansion revenue, or upgrades, can be influenced via a strong and proactive customer success program. That said, the kind of value metric that your pricing is based on and the pricing structure itself is just as important to effect expansion. Customer churn is a measure of the customer's loss by a subscription business. Customer churn is also called customer attrition. It is calculated as the ratio of the number of customers lost during a specific period of time, typically a month or a year, and the number of customers present at the beginning of that time frame. Customer churn is usually expressed as a percentage. For example, if the total number of customers at the beginning of the year 2019 is 100, and through 2019, five of those customers canceled their subscriptions, the churn rate is 5 over 100, or 5%. Customer churn rate can be expressed as a monthly figure or an annual figure. <music>